Welcome back. The men of our special operations forces operate in the shadows, behind enemy lines, usually without public acclaim. But sometimes there are missions so epic the entire world takes notice. Introducing the story of one of those missions is star of the smash hit, Lone Survivor, Ben Foster. The attacks of September 11, 2001, rallied a new generation of Americans to serve in the mold of their grandparents following Pearl Harbor. Among those young Americans was a Navy SEAL Lieutenant, Michael Murphy. On June 28, 2005, on a mission deep in the mountains of Afghanistan, Murphy and his small team were pinned down by a Taliban force. Braving fire, Murphy got into a position to call for backup. He knew the consequences of his actions, but he took them anyway because he wanted to save his friends. Shot through the chest, his last words before falling were, Roger that. Thank you, sir. Six years later, another SEAL team would complete the mission that America had waited for, a decade for, and that men and women like Lieutenant Murphy had sacrificed for. Sharing their story, Mike Rowe. April 11th, 2009. The Indian Ocean, off the Horn of Africa. High above the sea, stacks of U.S. Navy SEALs parachuted from two C-17 transports toward the clear water below. Three days earlier, pirates had attacked the cargo ship Maersk, Alabama, off the coast of Somalia. In a standoff that had captured the world's attention, the pirates took hostage the ship's captain, Richard Phillips, and sought to escape on the Alabama's lifeboat trailed closely by the U.S. Navy destroyer USS Bainbridge. A rescue mission was soon ordered to be undertaken by an elite team of Navy SEALs. Leading the jump of 102 elite special operators from his C-17 was SEAL Robert J. O'Neill. Aboard the lifeboat, the situation began to deteriorate. One of the pirates began screaming at Captain Phillips, beating him and pointing a gun at his head staging a mock execution. Now, aboard the Bainbridge, a small group of the SEALs monitored the lifeboat. When it became clear Captain Phillips was in imminent danger of being executed, the SEALs opened fire, felling the pirates. The rescue of Captain Phillips caused a sensation, bringing acclaim to his rescuers from the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, popularly known as SEAL Team 6. Despite the unsought fame, none of the men could know that their greatest mission was yet to come. May 2nd, 2011. After midnight, two specially modified Black Hawk helicopters sped through the night, crossing the border from Afghanistan into Pakistan. After a decade of searching, U.S. intelligence had identified the likely location of the world's most wanted man, Osama bin Laden. Aboard the second Black Hawk, Senior Chief Petty Officer Rob O'Neill counted every second as his team approached its objective, a walled compound 34 miles northeast of the Pakistani capital. The mission was fraught with immense peril. A joint operation with the Pakistani military had been ruled out for fears that bin Laden might be tipped off. Bombing the compound would result in the deaths of innocent civilians. And so, the mission was given to a small team of special operators, working alone with limited options for help should anything go wrong. Weeks of rehearsal had led to this moment, as teams from both helicopters breached the walls of the compound and advanced inside. Gunfire erupted as O'Neill entered the front door of the main building. In a back room, he found a young girl, terrified and alone. A fellow SEAL led her across the hall to a room filled with women and children. Though in the middle of a firefight and searching for the world's most wanted man, the SEALs remained determined to protect the innocent. Achieving surprise, the SEALs knew they had to operate with aggressive speed. 
The house could be rigged with explosives, and any individual inside might be outfitted with a suicide vest. Clearing the second floor, the point man spotted a tall figure behind a curtain at the top of the steps above. The SEAL point man advanced quickly up the stairs, O'Neill closely behind. The point man threw open the curtains to find two women yelling at him. Instinctively, he covered them to absorb the blast of any potential suicide vest. O'Neill, now operating alone, advanced toward a room on the right where he encountered a face he'd seen hundreds of times before. Seconds later, two bullets ended the decade-long search for the world's most wanted terrorist. The raid on Osama bin Laden once again brought acclaim to the men of the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, with each of the participants being awarded the Silver Star. And yet, as before, acclaim was not their motivation. Rather, it was to serve their comrades and to honor the memory of nearly 3,000 men, women, and children who, on a sunny September morning in Pennsylvania, Arlington, and New York, wanted nothing other than to go about their lives. Please welcome United States Navy SEAL veteran, Senior Chief Petty Officer, Rob O'Neill. What does it mean to have been part of history's, modern history's, uh, probably most acclaimed mission. After being here tonight with so many uh, heroes from World War II up until now, I'm so humbled to be here. I'm a guy from Montana who happened to have a good work ethic and, and had a positive attitude and was in the right place, right time, a lot of luck, but a positive attitude. Explain, if you would, please, just how special our special operating warriors are. I had an instructor at SEAL training Tell me, uh, regardless of what you've been told, this course is not impossible. So I'm never gonna ask you to do anything impossible, but I will make you do something very hard, followed by something very hard, followed by something very hard. The best advice he gave me before Hell Week was, you're about to go to war for the first time, and your enemy is all your doubts, all your fears, and everyone you know back home that told you you weren't good enough to do this. Keep your head down, keep moving forward no matter what, never quit, and you'll be fine. What do you want Americans to know about the generation that has served post 9-11. What I want people to know about the generation serving now post 9-11 is they're still out there. They're still fighting wars we don't know about. You know, we fought in wars b before, we will again, and we're gonna win because of positive men and women who are out there wearing the flag on their shoulder right now. They're fighting for all of us, myself included. So when you're at work and you're stressed out, you're at home, Take that deep breath, take that step back, think of them, then put your head down, keep moving forward no matter what, never quit, and we'll all be fine. Ladies and gentlemen, U.S. Navy SEAL Rob O'Neill. Yeah.